Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Miami Township Board of Trustees meeting of July 17, 2023. Um, may we first, I'll first entertain a, a motion to adopt the minutes of July 5th. So moved. I second. Hearing a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Any discussion? No. Um, we move and second to adopt the minutes of July 5th, 2023 is today. Mr. Winter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Motion is approved. Um, okay, let's. I also entertain a motion to approve um, the payment of bills. Um, at $42,777.41, that's general fund $2,496.90, fire fund 30, a modest $34,545.35, um, EMS billing $1,611.74, cemetery fund $674.66, and road and bridges $3,448.76. I so move with the deletion of the word modest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. um, hearing both the motion and the second, may we vote? We move and second to approve payment of bills in the amount of 42,077.41 as enumerated. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moncher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. The motion has been approved. All right. So through our correspondence, we had some information from our attorney, Jen Huber, regarding agritourism and the appeal of Kelly Patron. Correspondence from um, the regional planning, Green County Regional Planning. There's a final hearing, finally, for Perspectives 2040 before the Green County Commission, July 25th. For those of you who don't know, um, Perspectives 2040 is the uh, 20 year, um, what, what would you okay. say, plan? Yeah. Maybe the plan, um, land use plan. Um, Ohio Township Association sent us their newsletter. OTA training, that's the Ohio Township training. I saw an interesting training that they were advertising, and, they, and it's called, and it's Wednesday morning. I'd have to cancel lunch with a friend to do it, but. It's called Making and Defending Zoning Decisions. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Explore the fundamentals of making sound zoning decisions from the standpoint of statutory compliance and resolution framework. Examine the findings of fact, the delivery of decision, and the timing for an appeal, and what a court would look for if it's going to be reviewing your township zoning decision. And that would be a good thing to attend, and I might just Try to make that happen if anyone else Thank is interested. Thank you for reminding me. That would be great. Um, okay, at Green County Planning, our membership dues are going up. We knew they would. Mm -hmm. Probably 25 to 30 cents per capita. What that, that's about 1,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, 6,000 of us in the township approximately. Yeah. Um, Ohio Office of Budget and Management get, sent us their financial report for June 2023. Um, well, it's unincorporated for capita too. Hey, oh, it's what, what are you saying? It's unincorporated mm -hmm. for capita only. Right. Because oh. the village is is a member and a dues paying member on their own. Oh. Okay. So no double dipping. So that's only 500 bucks then. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Green County Auditor sent us, you know, Money. interesting information of all the local governments that got a revenue advance, including ourselves. Um, Patrick Osriff from Shred It. It sounds like you have a, they're going to shred our old documents that we so carefully um, next Friday. embedded. So, you, know, you, said, you said your, who said your life is an exciting, mm -hmm. I saw all those really? emails about how you're going to meet him. Um, Green County Sanitary Engineers um, sent us their newsletter called Pipelines. So you heard it here first if you're interested in 
the pipeline newsletter. David Graham, instructions, which we'll take care of today, to close our Clifton Cemetery Fund and transfer that money to the Clifton Cemetery Board so they can pay us to mow their grass. And that's what you call a resilient local economy. County engineer, Stephanie Gruff. Um, oh, wow, this is a big one for me. It's traumatic. She sent us information about traffic change on Street Route 72. It's all torn up. And if you had gone to the Greene County Township Association dinner, you would have gone a harrowing route between Cedarville and Jamestown to get to Jamestown to the meeting. Yes, you will. And then on the way back, you couldn't take 72. And how do you get back from Jamestown if you don't take 72? <laughs> it's, well, you, you know, take 35 to Bickett Road and then Bickett Road to, yeah. to uh, well, my, Wilberforce. It took me a couple of tries. <laughs> um, Glad you made it. Thanks. And last but not least, OPERS retirement training. If you know anybody who's retiring from OPERS, so uh, know there's training. Um, OK. Um, I'm going to, the last two weeks I said we were looking into some um, BZA uh, not, um, zoning concerns that um, a, a resident came to us on January 5th. He brought some grievances and some requests. And I thought since he wrote it out mul multiple times in writing and presented us in person, it's the least we could do to tell him where we're at with those things. So I'll be sending this to Mr. Weirig. Thank you, Mr. Weirig, but I'll read it aloud today. Thank you, Mr. Weirig, for your grievances and suggestions. I'm sure they were offered in the spirit of improving the zoning process. Although our work in addressing these issues is not yet complete, this is what we have accomplished thus far and a look at the direction we're heading. Um, he asked us about the April 20. 23 unapproved minutes um, that were distributed to the BZA. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is all public thing. We interviewed our chair and our um, chair of the Zoning Commission, Richard Sullivan, and chair of the BZA, um, no, Brian Corey, Richard Sullivan, and consu con consulted with our council. Brian Corey reports that months ago, during the joint meeting of the BZA, Z. of the BZA Zoning Commission Township. We all had a joint, joint meeting. The BZA requested guidance from the Zoning Commission on the temporary use. It was decided that the Zoning Commission minutes would be shared with the Board of Zoning Appeal so that they could be informed about the evolution of our, their thinking on changes to 18.52 temporary use of our zoning resolution. The rationale is that the BZA does not meet very often and doesn't stay current with the discussion. Well, this was not done. They did not share minutes regularly, but just before the meeting of May 3rd, um, Brian Corey, the chair, asked Richard Zopp if he could pro provide some guidance to the BZA, and Brian says that unfortunately Richard chose to send exclusively the 2023 April unapproved minutes, and um, Richard Silliman reports that they were distributed with as part of the testimony. So um, our council mainly emphasized that zoning commission minutes should never be considered to be a directive for the BZA, just as input from the township trustees should not be considered to be a directive to the BZA. Mm -hmm. And that was her main take. Um, it, she said it was not egregious that approved minutes were shared. That's not an egregious thing. They're public record. But it, this should not have been. It is unfortunate that they were shared in that way. That they, um, and I put an action here. The trustees have instructed the zoning inspector to avoid distribution of minutes and communication between the boards altogether. Zoning Commission minutes are available online. If the members of the boarding Board of Zoning Appeals want to follow their work, it's available. Okay, and then Mr. Where I guess this is about the recusal of Amy Aker, who, who recused herself from the BCA hearing of May 3rd um, regarding 
the Weird Pavilion shows, which are very close to her house. Um, and there was a back and forth. When did she recuse herself? You know, Mr. Mr. Weird asked Mr. Zopf, did she recuse herself? He, um, it, there was only a two-day turnaround from the time the applicant first inquired of the hearing, so there wasn't really a lot of time. But the primary problem of that whole thing is that we still don't have BZA bylaws. And therefore, there is no procedure for recusal. What, was that the procedure to tell Richard that she was recusing herself? We don't know because we don't know it, the procedure. Um, should, it be pre should it be presented to the zoning inspector or the chair of the BZA? Um, should the recusal be in person? Some townships, some small governments, as you come to the meeting and you recuse yourself right there, you stay and you listen and you participate, but non-verbally, and, and you don't vote. So since we don't have procedures. The action to be taken, BZA must create bylaws. I'm all ears on how we herd these cats into bylaws. Um, second action to be taken is BZA training, and um, that was another um, request by Mr. Weirig is that we get, the, he suggests, request that we have training for our BZA, and we, we all know that. Mm -hmm. And our, our, our attorney, Jen, says anytime they can do it. She's got a two hour training. I wish she was on, online where people could just plug in at their convenience, but we have to get them all together and present it. So that's, that's the, and who, who, who schedules that? Maybe I'll talk to Richard Silliman to try to do that or I'll do it myself or something. Last but not least, private email used by the zoning inspector. Private emails used by other people in the, but this in this case, zoning inspector. Action, Denny look me in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Me and Denny have a date on July 17th at 9 a.m. All township employees will have, I, I, on Wednesday, July 17th, 2023, Huh? What? No, no, yeah, 19. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Dang those typos. All township employees, excluding Fire and EMS, will have emails on the Miami Township server. All township business will be conducted on township email and readily, readily available for the public for, by public information request. Mm -hmm. And I, that is our dream, and we're going to manifest um, and also another action taking is we met with the zoning inspector and asked that he keep a file for each zoning case by address all permits and and permit determinations along with all correspondence from both parties of that case shall be filed in the township office and accessible to the trustees and the public um, Another, the last action, it is our fervent hope that the trust, trustees plan to create a BZA administrator position that is separate from the zoning inspector position. The process for BZA hearing requests and procedures, wait, wait a second. The process for BZA hearing request and the procedures for granting it hearings are not sufficiently clear at this point. They're, they're more casual, they're a, there are back and forth between um, the inspector and the applicant. Um, when we have a clear job description and clear procedures, the position will be posted. And for the minute taker and for the news, I could, when I correct my typos, I could send you a copy. Thank you. Wasn't there one item missing from that? Uh -oh. if my memory serves. I thought his first request was to have Richard um, released from his job position. Actually, there are two. On the spot. To, to have Virtually. Richard, they asked that Richard, they asked for Richard's rec resignation. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess um, we're taking a more procedural approach where we separate the BZA and leave him just with his inspector duties and more clear procedures. Was our solution to that if we needed one. Okay, but Technically, we did not terminate him as requested from Mr. Weir. Well, no. Okay, all right, but it just doesn't say that. Okay, well, that's all. 
So that was one of his four points. Okay. I remember the points. No termination. <coughs> and then secondly, he did ask us to, um, he asked that we video all zoning commission meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we decided that since the zoning commission, they're not elected officials like us and have to sit in front of a camera, and they're not hearings like the BZA. And um, so they're a group of volunteers, and I personally thought it would be intrusive to put a camera in front of them and, and do that. Um, did you guys have it? Uh, was that your opinions that, mo me, that morning we met? Uh, yep. I was in agreement and also felt that since we don't have the technical capability of you know, doing constant and multiple uh, minute recordings and then asking the village to provide the service of transferring them on demand to uh, thumb drives or some method of posting them, that there was a little bit technical. Uh, too technical, much help. Technical and intrusiveness. I'll get these two, you and you and Mr. Weird. Um, still on the public part of the agenda, we have some public here today. It, are you? What? Could, would you like to introduce oh, yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Kelly. Uh, You're John. Yes, and yeah, it's been really nice <laughs> to speak to you via email and on the phone. Um, this is my husband, Brandon, and we um, have been working with the zoning inspector to get some um, things going on a 25-acre parcel that we own in Miami Township for agritourism. So I'm getting ready to go sit this on his desk. So we figured we'd okay. stop in. And do you, is there anything you want to bring to us at this time? Um, well, I, I You don't I, have to. But, oh, no, but. it's fine. Um, so we've been working. It's been about 12 weeks to get a scheduled meeting with the BZA and I finally got an email back today that said bring your paperwork in and we'll get you scheduled okay. so so it's perfect been, timing it's been a back yeah. and forth and I think we've all received copies of most of it mm -hmm. yeah so well, I'm glad you're here too There's yeah it's good responses. to see okay um fire department report wait, wait, oh, I'm so sorry you, you live at you live on Kyle Road right mm -hmm. So the property in question is adjacent to our home site. So it's been a long road uh, with Mr. Zopp just back and forth, probably over the course of a year, trying to get to where we're at now and dealing with a lot of the same roadblocks as was previously mentioned in this meeting. So we're happy to have a, a Board of Zoning Appeal date now. And, um, well, we don't have it yet, but he said we'll get one. Yeah, we're getting close. Um, so we're excited to next steps and present what our plan is for um, agritourism approval. So thanks for having us today. And I'm remiss. I have to give you such a public figure that I no. Yes. But you are also a member of the public. And did you? Yes. Did you, like, did you come to speak? To I did come to speak. Um, as regarding. Richard's off and just want to get a recap of you know, our May 3rd BZA meeting and as a business Dino Palata resident Dino's Cappuccino's also but as a recap to see Good. We, Good. Can, we continually we continually go through this dance uh, you guys are going through it now we go through this dance of development or lack of development or, or, or holding back of development uh, regarding BZA or whatnot so out of these Chappelle shows Came off the holiday weekend, great, it was nice. Then we have Tuesday was the 4th of July, everybody's going back to work on, the on Wednesday, then you have the Chappelle shows, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Sunday you have people here. So, when I went to the BZA, we talked that day, we spoke about what it brings, economic, the economic benefit that it brings. Well, let me tell you, the economic benefit was ridiculous. It was unbelievable the amount of business that we get, that we that we garner. I'm gonna speak for myself, but we know what the, what the town was like. We knew the, if you've got a thousand people coming into these shows, they're hanging around in the village, they're hanging around in the area and they're spending. So there is an economic push, there's an economic development from this. And I really wanna get past, I hope we can grow and get past this, that we, we have to understand there is development coming 
You've got Honda coming, the Honda LG plant. These developments are coming. We need to start being less antiquated, just come up to speed. And that's what I'm professing to you guys that you could bring it down to the BZA or to, to Mr. Zoff that we really have to start looking. I know, I know we have our, that, that the township has set their patterns, what, what we look for for agriculture and development, but things are happening, things are moving and there's opportunities that are coming. This is just a microcosm. These guys are doing, every, you know, they're doing what they're doing. You've got Airbnbs that, that aren't allowed, to, we aren't allowed to get a livelihood going within the township if it's not agriculturally related. I'm just asking and speaking as, from my position of what came out of this this past weekend, and we go through this fight every year, but this dance works and there's money coming in and I just want to profess it, that we're all we're all getting seeing a boom from it and it's just something that Please, if you guys could see it trickle down to, down to the BZA or the, or, the, or the zoning, it's important that we just start updating our ways. And that's what I want to bring to the table for you guys. Yeah, we're not, al well, we're not allowed to trickle down to them and tell them what to do. We are allowed to make text amendments, suggestions. Um, what, what am I trying to say here? Um, the temporary use that that some people have been depending on is actually going to be coming up to a, he uh, a hearing. So they're going to have a document for, for us. And I've heard a yeah. few different things, you know. The big thing at the hearing was what is the definition of temporary? You know, is it repeatable? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what they're going to come up with, but it is a public process. Um, there are public hearings. I, so far, we're just advertising, you know, in the corner of the paper down here or wherever they stick us. I never see them, and I read the paper. So. Bring that note. No, that's okay. I don't have good attention to detail and visual detail. But I just. What the temporary use says. The, the rewriting of the temporary use, which another thing that came up in the hearing was, is a one paragraph to cover a whole lot of possibilities. It, and I think one of the decisions, one of the points that some of the testimony made was that it's not the BZA's job to um, try to figure out what they meant by it. Right. Well, and actually, it, that's exactly what their job is. <laughs> but um, it, it, there's not enough information, so. And well, I, I hear a, a a broader message from what Dino's yeah, saying, definitely. not just but that was this specific yeah. stuff, but that changes are happening and uh, township trustees, please listen and, and please review everything because Thank you. Thank you. A, may I have development you pressure you? that yes, you may. we need to because adapt to. I just want to report that it's so relevant at the at the Greek County Township Association meeting last week. They were very chicken little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. At the same night you were at the YSDC down, but they were like, they're coming. Eastern half of the county, watch out, Honda's coming, and Intel's coming, and there's gonna have a spin-off business and people are Going to be looking for places to live, and they they're going to be wanting to be in your really nice school district, your, with your big old county schools, and and they what they said, get your zoning commissions ready. Make make sure that your zoning resolution is lined up with your comprehensive plan, and make sure all of that is lined up with this new 2040 perspectives, and um, and Sh Sugar Creek Township said we've successfully fought two. Two battles with developers, and we can we can call us. We can give you help. And then, at the same night, Don was at the YSDC meeting, and the the message was the opposite. How can we court these developers, and how can we stimulate economic growth? So, I just want to say, are we prepared? Probably not. And and we need we need we have two positions, alternate positions open on our. Um, zoning Commission board. We have a, an alternate position open on our BZA board. 
Um, we have public meetings. People don't even know that these are public meetings. So I think we have a lot of communication to do. And I'm done. And Chris, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, the <clears throat> I don't think, in my knowledge, anybody disagrees with you or anyone who says that these performances do not bring a large economic impact, a large economic, a large positive economic impact into the village uh, and, and the township. I guess it's, it's the procedural portion of this that, that sometimes gets into conflict with what's going on. Obviously the procedural is, with this one, go to the BZA and ask for the temporary use exemption. And I believe that was done four times. Is it three or four? It doesn't matter. But in each instance, the BZA unanimously granted that temporary use permit. In general, in planning, the way we understand it, if you see a pattern of people going before a BZA and asking for variances time and time again, and the BZA basically granting those variances time and time again, what procedurally should happen is the, then the Zoning Commission should start to look at why these requests keep coming in and what can be changed in order that the, it doesn't have to go to the BZA every single time, that there is some mechanism for that to happen. And there is a mechanism for that to happen, it's called rezoning. A property owner has the right to come to the Zoning Commission and ask for a specific rezoning from agriculture to industrial or business. All they have to do is write a check for $100 and the procedure goes into place. And they can make their case and they can bring whatever information that they have before the Zoning Commission and have the property, if the Zoning Commission agrees that this is the, the solution to it, they'll have the property rezoned commercial, um, business, not commercial, we don't have a commercial. And then festivities like these, festivals, can happen uh, as the Zoning Commission does it. It, it doesn't come to, to the board. You know this better than I do, probably, that you know, all we do is we sit here and, and we will rubber stamp primarily recommendations from the Zoning Commission to us to make particular changes. Now, we have the capability, obviously, to reject them or to modify them slightly. But in general, following the procedure, if it gets through all of those hoops and comes to us for a recommendation, we generally uh, will agree with them and move that along. So in this case, you know, the, it can't really be the tail wagging the dog as much as, as our tails like to, to like to wag. We're not really in the position to petition or to, to uh, um, what's it called, uh, lobby uh, either the BZA or the Zoning Commission to, to make changes to do something. I'd like to say that you said they have an option, they have a way out, and their option is to rezone from agriculture to what they want. The other option is that, you know, we can re rewrite our code. Like, what they're doing now is, you know, Weirig has suggested a festival permit. It's not just Weirig who now wants to do temporary use. We okayed a temporary use last week, and it wasn't a world beating superstar, it was it's going to be a book signing party and a wedding. So, Jahim, that, that's not the only solution isn't for him to, re to request a rezone. And we can develop our temporary use section to, to spell out some of these things that people are asking for, whether or not we want to do it. I, I agree 100%. I wasn't specifically talking about Steve Weary and, and Dave Chappelle. I was, referring more to the broader economic possibilities that we might look at at something like this. And when you go down that road, you then start with Dave Chappelle and Steve Weary and 10 different shows. Then you have Richard Dillon, who owns 100 acres adjacent to that property, who looks at that and says, damn, this might be a good place for a Holiday Inn, you know, or two. That's You've got all these people coming into town, I could make a fortune renting the rooms. That, that's and then you because you got Youngs on one side, you have got Dave Chappelle on another side. But having a festival, a holiday in between but have a fest, having a festival and having a festival permit is nothing at all like having a holiday in. It's 
What, it's what's the, next, the topic here? It's the next general yeah. step into economic development. The, the topic development. is... The then put the Walmart the next to the Holiday Inn because all those people in the Holiday Inn want to go and, and, and buy stuff. So then you've got festival, and then you've got, then you've got the economic development. I, I, I get the slippery slope model. I, I okay. think that's a little over the top. Well, I, I'm just trying to be yeah, I under, it's direct about it. Direct, yeah. I, I mean, the, okay. uh, the other thing I thought of is you said we pretty much rubber stamp when we did it, and, and we're pointed out, and I know that, Chris, that you have done this in your career because you shared it with me. We can oh. initiate changes to the zoning code. We you said certainly... we pretty much they do it, and we say yes or no, and we rubber stamp it. That's that's not true. There are three ways: the applicant, the trustees, and the zoning commission. So the zoning commission has just the same right to to table that response from yes. us as they would from yes. Joe Blow. So you you can't really say that that us putting yeah. an initiative forward holds any more weight than anyone else, or has any more possibility of it being adopted. They have to adopt it, you're sure, that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanna make sure that, that this is not a done deal by us, you know, requesting a, true. a change. True, that's, that's true, thanks for pointing that out. Um, okay, this thank is you probably, for my this, two minutes. No, no, this is probably the tip of the iceberg, you know, you know, 90% of an iceberg is underwater, so. I, I just wanna make sure that Dean, doesn't leave here thinking oh, they're anti-growth or anti-economic development or anti any of these things that, that, that we've been discussing about. We're not anti anything. We're just we're pro procedure. We just want to make sure that procedure is followed, and that in hopes is that it's in the best interest interest of the township as a whole. I think that's what I was looking at. Just the uh, comprehensive land use plan. Just looking at that. And again, updating it. It's just there's some there's some antiquated things that are in here that I think you just need to update and see be forward thinking instead of looking back and say you know having Richard say no 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 the minister of no just stops everything in its path and we never get we never get movement or there's just a lot of there's a lot of friction to get that movement and I think we hopefully we can grow forward and move forward in that direction. Mm -hmm. Is there a procedure set up when you're dealing with him, like to get to the BZA or anything? For, for us? No, like for Richard, like when I send this stuff to him, is anybody else looking at it? No. Or? No. Although it's public record, if someone wanted to, they could ask. Sure. So will this get uploaded into a portal, a permit application? Or does it all get administered just within an office? It'll be scanned a, at, in. At this point, best case scenario, it'll be in an office with our new procedure that I just invented. It'll be in a file drawer. Yeah. Okay. Um, I sent a digital copy too, just in case it got question. lost. Or yeah. There's a lot of work to be done in the township. How hard new is era. How, how, how? You guys are the tip of it. <laughs> it's a, there's a lot of work to do, Don. There's a lot of work to do. Sounds like the chair has the, the chair's itinerary to, to, to get working hard. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Are there people are coming from, to me and asking. From what people, people are asking up, basic are we... things. Can we get can we get can we have this basic thing done? And it's like it's hard to say no. From what we've just been through, is there anything to be added to tonight's agenda beyond what we've just talked about? Not to the best of my knowledge. I'm just kind of nudging that we might move on. <laughs> okay. Um, would anybody, anybody else have anything to add? Um, thanks for sharing, both of you. Um, yeah. All three of you. Okay. Fire department report. I'll be brief. Uh, 20 EMS calls, 20 fire. We did a total of 13 inspections. Um, we had an employee, uh, uh, employee assistance in service um, a few days ago that was for the supervisors and addressed uh, depression, anxiety, and utilization of EAP in, in general. 
Um, our staff member that was out at FMLA is, was back as of Saturday. Um, and then just a dovetail I thought about with the Sapel Soses that came up. Uh, we had two very minor basic first aid kind of calls, um, which are very mild heat, heat stroke, and did, did some fireworks, no issues there. Done. Cool. Is the, the minor issues were at the Chappelle shows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I must say that's probably the um, briefest, most succinct. Uh, <laughs> that's why I said I'm going to be quick. <laughs> that I can recall. <laughs> that brings back memories. I ended up in the medic tent dehydrated at a Grateful Dead show back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to say where. <laughs> I would have asked you later on. <laughs> And then at the end of the show, I feel really bad. They said, well, you got two choices. You could walk back to the parking lot or you could be taken by ambulance. And I, I walked back to the parking lot. So, All right. I um, have a few things. Um, just a reminder, Colin, Colin Altman's retirement farewell is August 11th at 5 p.m. Public is invited. And um, Right here. Right here. Right here. Is our chief is yes, retiring. Yes, our chief. And new, new, we've always talked about the new email update, right, Denny? Yep. We're still on? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I had a question about, oh, I didn't dig it out, um, but I don't have to. We were talking the other day about the new medic. And could you just really quickly re remind me of the, the medic is an ambulance, for those who don't know, a uh, fancy ambulance, way beyond an ambulance, but the modern ambulance. What is the process we're on right now? First, you gave me four steps. First oh. thing that happens is- Oh, that was, that was on the fire truck. Uh, but it, it's, it's a little bit simpler uh, for the ambulance just because it's, it's just a simpler project. So, we're, we're, so we, we're actually on the org at, at the stage of we've already ordered. Um, so we've already done all the specifications and ordered? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Because I didn't have to do any major spec issues with the medic because it's not as you don't get as specific or as detailed about what you want it's a lot closer to being able to go buy a, a car for example there but are minor there different tweets. levels of medic of the, the it, yeah what, what we were talking about was the fire truck which was for me okay. to get um to get to make the initial call to, a, to a, a factory representative or sales rep, mm -hmm. um, get the specification process started so that we could get um, a rough idea of what it was going to cost so we could start working that stuff into the budget and then hopefully then being to a point where we could actually do the purchase. So I think that's the four that you were yeah. talking about. Yeah, because I've been, I was having a conversation with the township administrator and he said that Wait, we, a town, a, a township in oh, okay. at, at not a, our township at an elbow rubbing elbow session. Um, and we were talking, they talked about how they had a medic, and he said, Oh, and I just want to just bring this up for, for now in the future. So, oh, we would never spend that much money on the recommendation of one person with the specific with the specs. So we would always have some kind of committee and outside eyes looking at it. And this is a heck of a time to bring this up. Who in the world would you have qualified to be on a committee to recommend specifications for a, for a medic? Well, my, my, so we, we have done several purchases that were done by committee and it goes from a process of say an ambulance to a few weeks, two months. Uh, when we when we yeah. spec'd uh, engine eighty one, that took nine months to get it through committee. Well, you know what? Sometimes democracy takes longer. I mean, I'm just being honest. Um, and I, and, you know, we, there's nothing we can do about it now. But when you spend three hundred thousand dollars, <throat> even if it takes longer, you should have more eyes looking at it. And we that's the process we Who did. Who are the eyes? I'm, well, I'm just really curious. The, um, People from other um, people who've done this before, people who other people who know about Margaret. Every fire, or I'm sorry, not not Margaret. Sorry, every piece of fire apparatus in this building is 
I've done. Every single one. Yeah, and I'm talking about I'm the, sorry, big expenses. the cheap one, yeah. um, So you're saying that you got your basic ambulance, there's no list of specifications. There's no there's no like building up. We got our basic model, let's get this, 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 this. No, I can't say that there's not. You you come up with things such as, well, this is the type of siren we want, this is the type of light bar. Um, here's the brand of cot we want to use, that there, kind of and stuff. And there's no like more advanced technological things that we can choose to have. There's not a Cadillac version and a Subaru version. Um, not, per, not, I mean, not okay. particularly, unless you're talking about like a, a type one that's a van. That, that, was, that was my question, with, at least that's what this person might have been referring to is the, the, the size yeah. of the vehicle. And, and the other thing to keep in mind is that the, everybody is always given the opportunity to say, here are my things. Here is who, what I've seen. Who's everybody? Hmm? Everybody mm -hmm. in the department. Oh. So I, that, that still gives them the opportunity to provide feedback on, maybe they went to a conference and they saw this, and this, hey, let's look at this. Okay. So that's, that otherwise it, it is, I, I mean, we, so when Engine 81 was done, by, or when Engine 81 was purchased, so we had the initial nine month period of time, then we still spent an additional three months on specifications, which was not done in committee because that's done with the manufacturer. Okay, so that was 12 months and that was another nine months before the vehicle was done. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask around because I'm, to, to say that it just takes too long to do with committee and there's not much to be done, I so guess. that that was traditionally how things were done in a volunteer department uh, in yeah, rural I areas. Um, I just let me just be completely transparent and honest. The guy said in 2021 they bought their new medic and it was two hundred sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now I know inflation is out of control and I know supply chains are an issue, but you're expecting ours to be three hundred thirty thousand or greater. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, is it all inflation? Or do we just like nicer things? Or mm -hmm. no? Okay, so there's nothing we can do about it now. But you well, you, you, you also can't you you can't look at a, a vehicle manufacturer and say because you know to use to use the example you started with. Okay, there's going to be a price difference between a Subaru and a Toyota and things that are sort of along that line. We're not talking about. No, no, I, was, or, I, I wasn't talking, and I, I was a bad, when I said it, I knew that was a bad metaphor. I'm talking about, well, here's a super diagnostic thing that we did. That'd be cool. It'd be really cool if we had a super diagnostic thing. and wouldn't be great to have it. Hey, guys, I think we'd like one. Oh, we want one. Well, I would be more than happy to go through an ambulance or fire truck with well, you and you show a, you yeah, this you, is what we have. That would be great. And um, what is the name of the, the manufacturer? Braun. We're from? What is it? Braun. 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 B R A U N A U N, and this is not accusatory or anything. I'm just learning more about this, you know. And I would be very interested to know what the chassis was difference between the one that she's referring to and the one that we are. Oh, you could build you could build a van chassis, which is a yeah. horrible option, and probably drop eighty five just to okay. guess off of it. Those are not good options for us. Those are typically used for very minor inner facility transfers where you're not doing a lot. I mean, you're talking about the back of the ambulance being half the size of what we have. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'd love to know more about it. And um, I, what I'm trying to say, yeah, I'd love to see, we, well, we go through the fire, the engine, the engine that we haven't done the specs for. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love to know more, and I and I, I will be pursuing the idea that there should be more eyes on it. I'm not, and I want to say that I'm not being accusatory. I'm just learning about that. It, when when this person told me that they would they would never spend that much money on the recommendation of one person, it really it really made it really made sense. Well, yeah, I, I, I you would may be, have picked the perfect one. You I would be picked. very happy to talk to you offline, not in a public meeting, about those specific things. Yeah. Because I there are some things that I would like to say that are I wouldn't want to say in a public meeting. So maybe we could do that Wednesday morning. Maybe somebody should be with us. I don't care. Okay. Make a difference to me. Okay.
Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the chair. You've got, you've got yeah. some other non items on your list. The, um, that was just, I, I'll talk to him in that meeting. I'm sorry, Mr. Commander. Um, executive session. I'd like to um, adjourn to an executive session. Open, adjourn to an move. I'd like to entertain a motion to move to executive session. For purposes of? For purposes of. Cindy? <laughs> Consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of a public employee. Yes. Yes. All those things. Um, I, I so move. I'll second. Having a second, shall we vote? 545. 545. Uh, yes, I'll vote yes. Don votes yes. I, yes. <laughs> Are we dismissed or is that coming back? We will be back shortly. Okay. Yeah, hopefully shortly. You want me to go get him? He I saw his car take off. Open you did? The window. Yeah, and I thought he was going to run home real quick and gave the dogs are coming back. But, um, okay, well, we can do it in the morning. Maybe. Okay. Six. So we need to, at 6.11, we are... Okay. Entertain a motion to no. No, we were just we were going to re-enter public session. We're re-entering public session at six eleven. Um, and what and actions, if any, did we take in the executive session? The action we took was to approve a position description and um, employment agreement for interim chief for six months to offer to Denny. We will give him a week to. Look it over and um, sign it if he would like to accept the position. At the next meeting, we will um, give him an, an offer, a payment offer, or compensation, an offer for compensation. And that's that's it. That is it. I don't have anything else for fire. Um, cemetery Road Report for Dan. Okay. Since the last meeting, we've had three burials, a full burial, and two ashes in the Ben Forest Cemetery. The column burial doors have been removed and replaced, adjusted. Good. I'm sorry, the what? Column burial. They were all out of whack. How many did you think you readjusted? Oh, probably 15 or 20. Is that right? Some of them were even like super loose. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, piece actually come off with the magnet hole too, so. Is, is that an expense that they're going to cover? Or do we have to pay for it? They never even, no, no, they think they were supposed to. They, they promised to come down, but they never didn't, didn't do it. It's all done. Okay. So. Uh, I sold two natural burial graves today. I think maybe which sections? Prairie. Uh -huh. And wow. I think I think maybe another one in the oak grove, but they they're not committed yet. They won't think about it. Yeah. And then uh, Brandon's going to work on the drives this week. Get mm -hmm. some of the grass. Mm -hmm. He done some the other day. Yeah. He's Continue good. plugging away at it. We ever have out of state purchases? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Had one come in from Indiana once with a party bus. A party bus. That's about all I have. Anything for me? Anything here for you? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, no. Okay. I'll get your water signs in this week. I hope. Okay. I hope. Right. Fiscal officer report. Are we ready for that? Well, what about roads? Oh. Can we talk about roads? Sure. Starting tomorrow, we're going to start the trimming, finish trimming the road, one of the ditches. All right. Well, let's just review those roads. Um, 
I took a quick trip around and thought Smith, Houston, and Hyde, East Hyde, not East East Hyde, uh, should be on the mowing list. Oh, they are. They've been trimmed. Well, yeah, I know. Smith, I'm just East, saying mowing. Right, right. East East Hyde needs both right. mowing and trimming. Right. Larkins could use a little trimming. South River and Kyle could use both mowing and trimming. North River could use both mowing and trimming. Tanya could use to be mowed, and Bryan Park could use some trimming. Right. That's on my recommendation. Peter, you get those. Everything will get those. Okay. On South River, next to Doc Brown's, across from the East uh, Street Bridge Lodge, which is that yeah, little, the little river or something. Mm -hmm. When you pull out of the driveway looking east, there's like three trees, and I trim it back and you can see, but it, he would, he requested that we maybe take a couple of trees down right there to, to for visibility pulling out of his driveway. Now, this is going east out of Doc Brown's place. He says he has, he's almost been hit twice. The vehicle's coming, heading towards 72. He wanted to know if we could open that up a little bit. I looked at it. We could take a couple of trees down, would, would it give more visibility further. If you think that's a traffic hazard, you make that decision. That's I looked at it. I, I think it could be done. I just, you know, it's going to be at the very end of our right away. I mean, we took God knows how many down for Carolyn Bailey and the woman on Harvison. Uh, but I, I don't want to get into the, I've the habit at, of being I've uh, at somebody's Houston personal arborist. About kind of back even with these fence, we opened up a lot of visibility. So once I trim it with the boom mower, I'm going to look at it. I, I think one tree for sure we could take that. Mm -hmm. And it would be in our, it'd be right on, either in or right at the edge of our right. Yeah. So. Well, I assume that's where they were, sure. Right. So I, I said I would you know, run that by you guys and before right. I go out there and start cutting stuff down. All right, well, you, you decide. I think it needs to be something. Right. So I'll tell him. We'll, we'll do something as soon as we can. You agree? You're going to boom, boom cut something somewhere. No, he's going to remove. He potentially going to remove a tree at the at the full tree, not trim it, mm -hmm. take a tree down, or and the location uh, is I'm sorry, South, 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 South River Road, Road. South River Road sounds great. By Dr. Brown's house, sounds great. Okay, Thank you. sorry, I was thinking about fire trucks and medics. My bad. Hopefully we won't need either out there. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. So that's a that's what the road department's doing. Arm, right. arm feeling better yes. or worse today? I'm um, stiff. Mm -hmm. I get it okay, but it's just stiff and sore off through here. Probably after effect. Because the swelling. Like a leave or a Motrin or some, a leave. something? Yeah, it helps. Okay. Uh, it's still not lifting heavy. heavy I think stuff. we should explain what happened. Why are you you're asking him about mm -hmm. an accident? He, he was well, injured on the job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, replacing a wheelbarrow tire. I was. Exactly what it's it was. A, it's a big job. It was not one of the tractors. It wasn't motion. a tractor tire. It wasn't a, a mower tire. A simple motion can cause you so much problem. Like this. It wasn't it a dump truck tire. I would rather it did. It, it was a wheel a truck a tire. But the yeah, damage was done. Yeah. Want to go for roads? I think not for myself. Okay, done. No, roads. Um, nope. We're going to move this executive session. Um, fiscal officer. Oh, fiscal officer. Okay. Fiscal officers, right on it. Um, we have a resolution for, we already referred to it in the, in the, um, in the correspondence to um, take this fund we have, whereas Miami um, resolution number. 2023-31 distribution for revenue fund of 2000 revenue fund 2041 whereas Miami Township revenue fund 2041 no longer is of no longer use to a, the township and whereas under the direction of the Green County Auditor the Board of Trustees wishes to transfer these funds to the Clifton Cemetery Board therefore be it resolved that the Miami Township Board of Trustees hereby authorize the appropriation and expenditure of revenue fund 2041 and direct the fiscal officer to transfer $4,245.91 to the Clifton Cemetery Board. So moved. I'll second. And any discussion? 
Aye. Shall we vote? Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, resolution 2321 to adopt 2321 as enumerated transferring funds from the Clifton Cemetery 2041 fund. It's resolution um, 31. 31, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. From 2041 fund. There we go. Right, right. Um, I'll need a copy of that, please. Yes. If possible. Thank you. There we go. Um, Mr. Mucher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes, resolution is adopted. Thank you. I, I may remind um, the trustees that the fiscal officer has to um, attend once a quarter. I'll remind her this quarter would be July, August, or September. If there's a, if you have any, I will be. I will not be here September. Since you're talking September, yeah. Hold on, I find the date for you. I will not be here September 18th. So I'll see if maybe that's the date, but we may want to um, gather our um, questions and maybe special, since take advantage of the fact that she'll be here. Um, under zoning report, we have an executive session, and um, we, I don't plan, we don't foresee any um, action coming from that, so we'll move that to the end, so y'all could not have to endure. Um, standing committee reports, MBRPC did not meet this this month. Green County Regional Planning, anything to say, Chris? We, we did meet, and as mentioned in the correspondence, in, in in the executive session, we also reviewed the entire 2040 conference and land use plan and, and all the sections of it and asked for any uh, comments and, and everyone to a person, uh, male or female person, um, were very impressed with the, with the work that was done by the uh, staff of regional planning in preparing the, that, uh, uh, that 2040 plan. And it will now go before the full commission on Tuesday next um, for adoption within within the commission, and then we'll go for public comment uh, before going to the commit the commissioners, the Green County commissioners, who make that final uh, adoption. Okay. Unlike in townships where we do not adopt it, the trustees do not adopt a Long Branch Camp comprehensive plan. Oh. And this. Is available online? Yes, it is. <coughs> That's the only one I have. I okay. Don Clifton Union Cemetery? Uh, the Miami Township trustees have uh, just authorized giving us $4,000. This is breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have not met since I uh, last reported. We have a meeting scheduled August 3rd. Uh, we have been given a house that will be sold and put in money put into a reserve fund. So that is somebody's years ago, yeah. somebody put, uh, put this house in their will. Uh, Gifted to Clinton Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Kind of a head scratcher because it's, I mean, we'll have this large reserve fund. Is that in Dallas? Yes, in Dallas. It's, uh, it's specified that we can only spend in, uh, income from investment. Mm -hmm. um, okay, is that it? Yes. Now, is why is Development Corporation too big of a topic? Do you, uh, have, a, do you have the abridged version? The, the synopsis? Or take as long as you want. Well, there are various little things. Um, and I, I may be. Am I right that the Development Corporation <laughs> directly got the grant for community solar study? Or was it yeah. through the. Community Foundation. Anyway, it was initiated by 
uh, the Development Corporation. That was new business. I think that's all Development Corporation. And I was, we, I contacted you guys one day, they asked us to participate and um, a letter of support and make a little video. Five of us had to, I did it, um, about why we need community solar. Um, community solar, I, I was going to look up the definition of it, but as far as I understand it, rather than um, a large investment co corporation coming in and having a large solar field and feeding it directly to the grid, it's, it's more a community level and it supplies, I actually don't know that if anybody's got the definition of community solar, but it's more of an integrated um, specific for, for supplying a community with community solar. The grant was. Um, you go out and look at the glass farm. Yeah, that's community solar. Right. Um, so I think the first round, I do believe we got $100,000 in the first round. Oh, yeah. And. Got a pressure it was about it today. And, oh, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, what we asked for was the, in, the, in the first phase, money for just for the ex expertise for what's possible and what can we do. And um, and then if we do a good job in the first phase, there's like all these sub goals. And um, if we do a good job in the first phase, the second um, phase, with, we're eligible to be funded at two hundred uh, additional two hundred thousand dollars. So it caused me to think that where would you put a big solar, a big community solar thing? And I, I'm thinking. It could possibly end up. We could possibly end up looking at the township, and then that kind of gets into we're redoing. We've asked our zoning commission to, you know, write the regulations for that. So mm -hmm. that so there are people there might be people interested in joining. You know, having public input into, or as this develops, what our needs, what are our needs for, if. What for a community solar project, and how? I'm might sure there will be people who want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, years ago, you know, nothing's ever new. It's always reinventing the wheel. But years ago, there were relatively extensive plans that were presented from the village manager at the time to uh, uh, put a tremendous amount of solar on the um, um, Commerce Park before Cresco yeah. was there. Okay. Uh, use a great portion, a large portion of that for solar, in addition to the Vernet property on Dayton oh. Street, to have it totally, okay. so totally maybe, dedicated so maybe to solar. The, there is space within the village. So, well, that that came up once. Well, phase phase one begins with public input, so yeah, it'll be, be long, it'll, it'll be, be big. Long. Can a lot I of ask attention. Some questions, or, or should I just no, do sure, that yeah, off? Please. Of, um, yeah, so when the press release came through, it was that YSDC had gotten the grant, and I thought, well, they're not, as far as I know, they're not, they are not doing solar projects, so it must be for the township. That was just my assumption. No. But um, how did you, I guess, how did you get involved in the grant? Like, did, did you guys um, go through YSDC? We did a letter of support. Why is we this? were requested to, to produce a letter of support for the grant gotcha. to YSDC. Gotcha. It, wasn't, it wasn't from us, it was mm -hmm. to us. And okay. the grant was written with the village township um, orientation. Everybody, so this won't be necessarily just strictly a township project, this would be- Oh no, it's not, okay. we're, no, Lisa Abel is just, gotcha. this is YSDC motivated gotcha. completely. I mean, not complete, I mean, we we're just been asked to participate. Okay. No, no, no. Sorry. No, no, please ask questions. Thank you. Okay. Um old I we guess we didn't have any old business. And um, the environmental commission? Oh well, yeah, we're standing report. Here. Yeah. Green County Township Association. Oh I'm sorry, because we went to the company solar grant, that was our new business. I skipped ahead. Um Oh, I didn't see Environmental that. Commission. I went I saw I went there for the first time to to represent us, it was interesting. Let me talk mostly about the. Um, Byron. No, <laughs> about the Ellis Pond and the, oh. the algae mm -hmm. problem and a few other things, but nothing. Wait, you're putting solar on Ellis Pond. 
don't start any rumors, Don. <laughs> And, um, Something better run this and I, I wanted to add the Greene County Township Association, but I already reported, while well, Dino was talking, I already reported out on mm -hmm. the whole topic of um, potential development coming. So um, if there's nothing else at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to move to executive session. So moved. For the purpose of Personnel. Okay. Well, we're going to get it exactly we'll get though. It. I'll, I'll have it memorized one of these days. To consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee. Yeah. And uh, we don't anticipate any other business after that, correct? Correct. So that means. I move to do second. No, I move to. Uh, 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 I second. Okay. Moved and seconded executive session at 6.30. Fill that out and give it to Margaret, please. So yes. She some yes thank you. And yes, I think we're all ready to vote. Or oh, can I ask one more question? Oh, yeah, you can ask as many questions as you um, like. The Clifton Cemetery Fund, mm -hmm. the, was that the one that was the mistakenly filed and it had been money that came from? No. It wasn't the money that had come from the uh, bequeathed, like a uh, bequeathing? Oh, like year I see what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. and, yeah. There is no direct um, documentation gotcha. of where that money. But that's sort of a theory that it came <laughs> left over from. That was one possibility. Gotcha. Okay. But it has to, you know, you just have when you had something sitting there for thirty years, yeah. you just have to, you know, draw the line and say this is. Now what we're going to do it, sure. you know, it, it needs to work for the township, mm -hmm. and there's no real there's no real way that it can, you know, benefit the Clifton Fire Station EMS department sure. that doesn't exist, right? And that's a whole other story. And it, it kind of morphed over the years into the Clifton Cemetery, you know, right. And that board, the Clifton Cemetery Board, that's a, um, or whoever you're, it's going to now, that's a... Uh, I represent our township, and there's a representative of Clifton, mm -hmm. and, there, we, and although that representative is chosen by the board, sure. and there is representative of a Green Township in mm -hmm. Clark County. You want to explain to her what a Union Cemetery is? So. Oh, all the different townships... Or well, you, you tell me, I'll guess. <laughs> because it's a very unique creature. There are yeah. very few. I think there's like two of them in the state of oh, okay. The the village of Clifton is partly in Union Township and Green Township. Partly, excuse me, Green Township and partly in Miami Township. The cemetery itself is all in Miami Township, but it serves this by county by township or dual mm -hmm. county dual uh, township village so you have this hybrid model mm -hmm. and it started out as a church cemetery oh. the church is in the village the cemetery was in the township oh, okay. and so that, when the church dissolved or dissolved dissolved their their association mm -hmm. or their their their, their um, operation of the sure. cemetery you keep you keep going uh <laughs> i already said my part it's Sorry. it's two different then you have to this was the only way to make a hybrid control of the two mm -hmm. or it was one of the only ways I, I mean you could have done different ways but this is the way that they, that they chose that the cemetery is is a body is an independent organization on its own it is not owned the cemetery is not owned by miami township cemetery is not owned by green township it just happens to reside in both of them, but it is owned by the Clifton Cemetery Board. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have all the financial responsibility for it, they have all the operational responsibility for it, they have all the maintenance responsibility for it. And so the board, and as Don said, is made up of representative of both Green Township and Miami Township and Village of Clifton as a, as a third member. And they meet quarterly and decide 
all the important things that are, need to be decided about the operation of the cemetery. Okay. And but the board hire, of trustees of Miami Township or the board of trustees of Green Township, other than we we offered to as a township, we offered to to provide the maintenance for it and be paid for it, and gotcha. we bill them every year, okay. except for last year. Only paid. No. I mean, they had a bill yet. <laughs> According to Margaret, they were never billed. They were. Ne she never received an invoice from a bill from you. Okay. And, okay. Okay. That, that's. I'm glad you reminded me of that, though. <laughs> but we provide the maintenance, and and we split the cost with Green County of the maintenance. But that doesn't mean that we uh, have any Green responsibility. Township. Okay. Green Township. Green County. <laughs> and you hire. You said we, something. We hire, we, we hire um, Miami Township to do the maintenance. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I appreciate all that. It's I a cozy it. arrangement, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, I appreciate that. That. You're, you're, you're the. I'm well, also just nosy. Well, well that's good. If too. you want to be nosy, it's worth visiting. Okay. Go drive. Oh, it's a beautiful subject. Walk around. All right. It, yes, it is. Yeah, a beautiful road in Clifton. Do you know where it is? No, I mean, yeah. I'm sure I can find it. Yeah, right. it's a beautiful cemetery and a beautiful road. Well, thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thanks for your interest. Since you stayed to talk about it, I'll, def I'll make sure I write it up. <laughs> we appreciate it. All right, we voted or we're going to vote? We did vote. We, I, it was a, there seemed to be an acclamation that was happening. Unanimous. So.